Hey everybody, welcome to the March stitching vlog. <clears throat> I am homesick from work today. I stayed home today and yesterday. I don't know what I have. I caught something. <clears throat> um, I don't know if I got it from work where everybody is sick or if I got it from the stitching get together where everybody is coming up sick. There's just, there's just stuff going around everywhere. So I ran a fever yesterday, so I could probably have gone to work today and worked because I feel okay, but I know that because I had a fever yesterday, I would probably be contagious today, and that just would be negligent and irresponsible of me to subject other people to my germs because I feel like I need to get work done, so it'll be fine. That's what I tell myself. It will be fine. I'll just dive in on Monday. <laughs> so, um, today is Dad's birthday. I was gonna switch over to my Chatelaine today, but, um, I'm not feeling it. I think it's because I'm sick. I'm just not feeling like anything where I need to think too hard. And I'm just really, really enjoying this. So, me and Death by Cross Stitch, well, I do feel like death, so I guess that's appropriate. Me and Death by Cross Stitch may, you know, stay together for another week or so. We'll see. Um, I really, I would like to get all the way over to the other edge. But, I mean, that's, I mean, it's way over where the other edge is. Please don't pay attention to my floor. I need to clean I've just been piling stuff up while I've been sick. Speaking of which, I've decided something else. Oh, my my house is nothing compared to what I'm watching on TV. I'm watching Hoarders. <laughs> That's disgusting. That is so gross. Yeah, there's Buster. Buster. Buddy. He's ignoring me. I put him out of my lap a second ago to go get more coffee. See, he's pouting. That's my pile of thread that I'm pulling from for Death by Cross Stitch. It looks like chaos, but I, I promise it's kind of organized into different hand dyes and silks. <laughs> I have lost my metal house <laughs> underneath all of those needle minders. I've got to go and buy some type of magnetic board to hang up and put those on. It is out of control, people. Not to mention, my ottoman that I have my feet on is full of stitching stuff. Yeah, my cleaning stuff that needs to go upstairs is over there to the left. My ottoman that I have my feet on, um, there's more needle minders in there. So, I gotta get that figured out. I've told Jim, see that, that stairway there that goes down to our foyer and our front door and like, it's pretty much just that stairwell, a little tiny foyer area, and then a door out to our garage. I've told him for my birthday, I want that painted. It's the horrible cream color from, like, the contractors. <laughs> so, I'm hoping that he and I can get that done this month, or beginning of next month. That would be awesome. <sighs> but yes, magnetic board. That's what I need. Organize that take back my my little metal house there maybe just have one or two on there as needed okay I'm gonna get back to stitching and watching quarters and I'm gonna use this time to catch up on floss tube because I desperately need to do that I'm so behind and oh I got a little bit of haul in the mail yesterday I know I'm all over the place this is me on on cold medication guys I don't know if I cold, something viral, the flu. I don't know. I feel like death. I got this. And this is one of those acrylic ones that really, really works well. It's a great magnet on it. It's a bottle of tears. And then I bought this kitty. Yeah, how adorable is that kitty? Let's see if we can get it to focus better. 
and then the little spool came for free. And you can see this is from, gosh, it's a really strong magnet. Sunspot Creations. I think she is on um, Floss Tube and Instagram and everything is Sleepy Kitty Stitches. If I'm wrong, I'm so sorry. Like you can see that the card is dented from that magnet. <laughs> but there you go. Facebook group and an Etsy shop. Focus. There you go. Cute kitty. Okay, there's my coffee pot telling me it's not going to stay warm any longer. I'm going to get back to stitching and maybe take a nap. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. It is March 15th. Yes, March 15th. Um, I looked at the calendar today at work and thought, oh, crap, it's halfway through the month. And I think I filmed once. So, um, I also felt like lipstick today. I rarely wear lipstick, but I was like, you know what? It's like the coldest day we've had so far yet. It's like, feels like in the teens outside. So that is freaking cold for Georgia. I'm wearing two shirts. Well, a shirt and a sweater. It's cold for Emily. So I felt like I needed a little something extra. So this video is going to be whatever you saw right before this, where I was sick as a dog. I had stayed home from work for like two days and then it was Saturday and Sunday and I drug myself back to work on Monday and kind of recuperated and worked that week. Mm -mm. Yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. I still have a little bit of nasally stuff from that, but I'm good enough to film and I'm, I'm working, obviously. Um, so you're going to have that tiny clip. And whatever I film here and insert in and I'm going to do, sorry, itchy nose. And I'm going to do not even with like days on it or anything, but like a bam, 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 time lapse of my cross stitch and how I got day by day done after this. So what is first? I have done nothing but work on death by cross stitch this month. I started it at the end of February, maybe like February 22nd, and I have wanted to work on nothing but Death by Cross Stitch since then. I've already told myself that this is going to be Death by Cross Stitch March. That's all I'm going to work on. Unless I, I decide that I'm tired of it, but I haven't yet. I haven't gotten tired of it yet. I don't think it's going to happen. Yesterday, I moved my Q-snap. And I'll show you in just a second where I got to. But as I moved to my Q-snap, I was going to take a picture of it off the Q-snap to put on Instagram. And I realized that it's gotten so wide, like you can't really take a good picture of it. It's just, it's getting too big. So I took a video and kind of panned across it. So I'm going to see if I can't insert that video here. Hopefully you just saw it and you're like, wow, it is getting big, just like I was. Um, if you did not just see that video, sorry, you'll see the progress pics at the end. Um, but this is where I am right now. This edge right here is the far right edge. So like from this edge to here is page four. So I had already taken these... Um, these images, the birds, and then this almost like lattice work here and work to those onto page four because I, when working with these hand dye threads and silks and stuff, I, and plus I just like to do it motif by motif, that's done. So I'm already thinking in my head colors for this image and stuff, and I'm not sure if I'll just work down or if I'll like kind of um, typewriter myself cha -ching, all the way back over to the left and start across again so but that is my death by cross stitch right now
I'm not keeping up with these colors. Like in my head, I know what they are. Like I know this is Dinky Dye's Daydream. Um, this is Coloring Cotton Redwood. This is Weeks Dye Works Blue Spruce. This is Weeks Dye Works Moss. What is this? Um, this is Weeks Dye Works Onyx. This one right here, that is Weeks Dye Works River Rock. Um, that's a dinky dies. I don't remember. Um, I'd have to pull out the, the tag and, and look at it. But I've had several people be like, I hope you're keeping up with what threads you're using. I'm not. I probably will never sit down and actually write it all out. Um, I have no issue with anybody stitching this similarly to me. Um, if you're watching my videos and it's from piecing together what colors I'm using, I don't care if you stitch it just like mine. Do not mind. More power to you. Um, but I just recommend, you know, picking a border color and then just choosing other colors as you go. Just what feels right to you. Pick colors that you love. What speaks to you in the moment. So, I mean, you're going to enjoy it more that way. I promise. I absolutely promise. So that's where I am with this. I wrote kind of a, um, a list of things that I need to touch on since it's been so long. Haul. Next up is haul. It's pretty much just a few charts and a couple of threads. First up, I bought this... Um, it's like a, a new baby sampler chart. I've never bought one of those before. This is the only one I've ever seen that I actually like. I like this one. And if I ever stitch a baby sampler thing for somebody, this is the one it's going to be. This is Tree of Life by Maura Blackburn. It says around it, um, you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and stars. And it says down here on the bottom, it makes a note um, of the Desiderata. I know that Letitia is stitching, stitching that. And I, now that I think of it, that I believe that is a line from that. But it shows you kind of a tree of life here. And it has name, spot for the baby's name, the date of birth, and time. And who stitched it? But I don't know if I would have to be like my niece or something for me to put my name on it. Other, otherwise, I think I would just kind of fill in some little motifs as filler. But I bought that. I'm going to be stitching that for someone soon. We'll see. And then I have my stuff from Nashville Market that I, were had to have for me from this year's market. Um, what order? First off, this is Ink Circles Dragons of Sinatra. I fell in love with this when I saw someone share it. And it is definitely one that I see myself starting this year. I actually already have um, a hank of silk on order that I'm thinking about using this on. And I've already got some linen that, that I could do this on. Love it. Love this. It actually, um, it's like a companion piece to Big Red Ship almost because this, this is an original sampler in which I collected at Motis from antique Indonesian textiles that I ran across while researching tampon ship cloths for my Big Red Ship of Life sampler. So I, I see them as kind of companion pieces. I wasn't surprised when I read that, you know, that I liked this one so much because Big Red Ship is, is a whip that I currently have and love. Very, very much. Um, this one, I did not love the first time I saw it, but as I kept going through the Nashville Market stuff to make sure that um, there wasn't anything else I wanted, this one like just kept, every time I saw it, I liked it more until I was just like, you know what, I love that one. <laughs> so this is Swan Garden. I think I kept trying to call it Swan Lake. I don't know why. This is Swan Garden. <laughs> By Kathy Barrick. Let's see if I can't get it on glary. I think it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. There is a ton.
ton of colors in this though. I'll just kind of show you um, quickly the back and the color listing. Thankfully I have a full set of DMC, but it's actually, this is charted for NPI. I won't be stitching this in NPI because who can afford that anymore? But yeah, um, the DMC conversions are on there and hopefully it's, it's a good conversion. So I really like that and it's very beautiful. Last but not least, um, I got the Coffee Quaker by Heartstring Samplery. You know, our own Natasha or Stitcherella has started a sale for this that's going to start April 1st. I will try to remember to link a group for that down below. So there's already a whole bunch of people in there. There's a lot of excitement about this chart. It says, first I drink the coffee, then I do the things. I own several Quaker designs, but I have yet to actually stitch one, so I'm excited about starting this. The designer is also in that sal group and has been completely awesome and just has said, if anybody has any questions, um, don't hesitate to ask. I'm super excited to see people stitch this up on different fabrics and in different ways. And she actually in the group has included a couple of alternative wordings. Like this is first I drink the coffee. Like she's added charts in there if you want them for like first I drink the tea or first I drink the soda or first I drink the diet cola. So she's she's being really awesome with the group and, and helpful. So there's that. I misplaced them. Nope, here they are. I tossed some threads for this in a bag. Um ones that I'm planning on using, like different shades of browns and kind of burnt reds and oranges that kind of are coffee related to me. Some of these I are in here, I'll, I'll honestly say, because they have coffee related names. Like I, I know I have a really dark floss in here that's called black coffee. And uh, like, hazelnut and nutmeg and cinnamon and all of these colors that just made me think of coffee. Um, this one, some of my first Valdani threads are in here. I actually have never used those. So this one is called chocolate brownies. Look at that beautiful variegation. So pretty. My skin is so white I'm using it as a backdrop. There's that. So, I went through my stash last night trying to figure out what fabric I want to do this on. The cauliflower fabric is, where is it? R&R &R Reproductions 40 Count Stars Hollow Blend. Um, I'm not going to use that because, number one, I'm not going to buy fabric just for this. But you guys know I hate, I don't want to call it a boring fabric, but I, I don't like, um, white fabrics and I know it's not white but it looks white it's too white for me so I went through my stash and I pulled a couple of fabrics that I thought would be cool and right now I'm debating between these two this is a solo dye that I bought off e eBay um, like a 32 count Wexford from Silk Weaver so I am debating either this I think this one is winning at the moment because it kind of has a more even modeling to it. You need to watch me fold this back up. I know y'all are excited. This is, it's kind of a purpley, brownish, pinky. Anyway, this one is, I got at um, Needleworkers Delight up in New Jersey when I was up there. This is a piece that I bought packaged. This is Mukiite Stone, which I have stitched on before, but this, something about that, that dye of Mukiite Stone, I'm probably destroying how you pronounce that, but you know what, I don't really care how I pronounce things on my videos, and if it's wrong, I don't care. 
Sorry. Um, I don't, though. And a lot of pronunciation, I feel like, especially from people who have grown up in families where reading is a big thing, if someone mispronounces something because they learned by reading, that's, you know, at least they're trying. Tangent. Sorry. So that is this piece, Mukiite Stone. Um, I bought it packaged. I don't know that I had, would have bought this piece if I had known that it had this big area on it. And the way it was folded in the package, it was folded up so small, you couldn't tell it was there. So, um, it may go on this if I can figure out a way to stitch around that spot. I'll have to measure out how big the piece is going to be and how I can center it and arrange that. We'll see. We will see. There's a good chance it's going to end up on this other one. I probably won't know until that starts on April 1st exactly which one I'm really going to use. Um, what's next? Um, my birthday is next weekend. It is the 25th and there's supposed to be this big fundraiser for where I work that day that I go to every single year and I'm not going. I told them I'm not going because it was scheduled on my birthday and I have more important things to do on my birthday. So, um, if that more important thing is sit on my ass and stitch most of the day and enjoy some time and then go to dinner with my husband and come home and do whatever we want to do, then that's what I want to do on my birthday. I already um, worked an event once on my wedding anniversary, so I just decided I'm not doing that. Um, I'm just not. So, there's that. Be 35 this year. I don't feel 35. Probably look 35, but I don't feel 35. Um, Jim turned 40 last year, so I'm okay with it as long as he gets old before I do. <laughs> um, I mentioned this other thing on Facebook and Stitch Mania, and I guess. I got more comments on it than I've gotten on anything I have ever posted, so I, I guess I, I riled some people up over it. I'm going on a stash diet. It's not because I have credit card debt. I don't have any credit card debt. None. I, I have a credit card. I pay it off every month. I actually paid it today. But when I buy stitching stuff, I buy with money that I have. It comes straight out of my account. I always make sure I do that. But just because I there there is money doesn't mean that's what I should be using it for. Um, it was I just kind of had a realization moment that I don't need all this. I mean I I enjoy it, but there comes a point when I'm like, is this getting ridiculous? And it's not that I have too many whips or anything. It's just you know, I, I could go upstairs right now and shop in my own stash. I mean, I could. So, I just, I'm actually really interested to, for at least like a six month period, not spend any money on stitching stuff and see how much money I can squirrel away into our savings account. I, I thought about going back through all of my banking records and adding up how much I've spent in, say, the past year. Um, I'm honestly a little scared to do that. And I know it wasn't some ungodly amount because, geez Louise, I'm a social worker. I'm not making ridiculous amounts of money. Anybody who is or knows the social worker, knows that. But, I mean, Jim and I don't have kids. We, we live in a very modest home. Um, the, we have a, a small mortgage on, and we, you know, we don't, we don't spend money on a lot of ridiculous stuff. And so, you know, it's where my money went. But I would 
I'm going to try to, to really squirrel away some money and save because we have toyed around with the idea of moving into, because we live in a townhouse. Like there's somebody that lives on the other side of this wall and there is another townhouse on the other side of that wall over there. Sometimes, you know, stitchers get it. You guys are introverts too, for the most part. And a lot of us aren't really people-y people. We, Jim and I would love to be in a place where we're not like this with neighbors. <laughs> that would be amazing. So to be able to continue to really sock some money into a savings account and maybe look for a small house somewhere without neighbors. The idea of it is titillating, it excites me. Megan wants me to come move next to her. I think that house sold though, sorry Megan. Plus that would be one hell of a commute for me. I don't think I can do that. Um, I would have to change jobs and I, I'm just not in a place where I can do that right now. Um, so, stash diet. Even though I'm on a stash diet though, um, I have two orders that are placed that I have not received. One is threads and fabric, and one is threads. I purchased a couple of hanks from Silks For You. One was a hank that I got for Dragons of Sumatra, and I also purchased another hank from her when I was buying that one just because it was pretty. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's just it was a gorgeous color. But I mean that's what I'm saying. I I don't need it. I don't need it. But I'll squirrel it away and I'll I'll use it one day. Um, the other thing that I purchased, there's been this seller on Etsy that I have been watching stuff in her shop for a while and have really been impressed by the way some of her stuff looks. And I finally said, I'm going to order something from her and see if I really like it or not. It's called Nina's Hand Dyed, I believe, and she is based in Hungary. I ordered two pieces of fabric and some silk floss from her. The silk floss that I ordered from her, if it's what I think it's going to be, knock on wood, is what I'm going to use for Nightmare. I know I've been saying I was going to use the, the Verdigris, but if this is how it looks, I think it's going to be perfect. And I kind of have a plan to take strands of other silks and weave in with it for portions to kind of give it that discolored, oxidized look on the helmet. I'm really freaking excited about it, honestly, to kind of try to give it this really artistic discoloration as I stitch. Like, I hope I can wait till Mania to start it. And then after I start it in Mania, if I'm as into it as I feel it, like I, I'm excited right now, it's probably gonna be what I work on the rest of May. <laughs> so, cross your fingers. I, I hope those threads are as awesome as I think they're gonna be. Um, they weren't super cheap though, so let's hope that they're awesome because they're, even if they're not, they're probably getting used. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, um, needle minders. I have been using, hold on. This bank that sits on my coffee table has been holding a lot of my needle minders because this is, it's like really heavy. Like I could use this as a doorstop. This is an old antique bank. You can see where you put the, the coins in up here. I actually, this is one of the things that I'm going to start collecting. I've had this one for a long time. I'm going off on a tangent. It's okay. I've had this one for a long time. Jim and I enjoy yard sailing in the summer, these really big, long yard sales. There's one here in our part of the U.S. called the World's Longest Yard Sale, 
and it stretches from Gadsden, Alabama, all the way up to Ohio. We love going to it. We love going to it because you can find all kinds of cool stuff. I think I gave like a few dollars for this at the little stop on the side of the road. Love it. I have another bank in my kitchen that I, I won't go get, but I think I'm going to start collecting these too as I can find them really cheap at yard sales and stuff. It's just, it would be something fun for me to be able to look for as we're, you know, hitting those in the summer. It's something we enjoy doing together. Anyway, let's come back full circle. I've been putting, you know, some of my needle minders on this so that they're within reach here on the coffee table and probably will continue to have one or two on here. But it was getting to where I couldn't even see the house. It was just covered. So, I was at the local craft store the other day and noticed that this was 50% off. No idea where I'm gonna hang this, but it needed to happen. I finally gave up and bought a magnetic board. So this currently has all of my needle minders on it. This had to happen because I was losing my bank on the table and also because some of them I was just sticking in my ottoman stuck together and my favorite one my death head moth had an accident I have one of those flexible um, like seamstress tapes tape measures and it's stuck to my death head moth which now looks like this broke my heart guys but I can't bring myself to get another one because this one's still fine it's just a little worse for wear so that makes me sad so I've got to figure out a place to hang this um, sorry I have to figure out a place to hang this um, where the one I'm covering up won't necessarily offend anyone like my mother should she come over so Maybe I'll put it in the guest bathroom. We'll see. Um, I also, that same day, I picked up a frame to finally frame Josephine in, my romantic mademoiselle monkey that I stitched up last year. Have I framed it? No, I haven't. Thought about it. Thought, thought long and hard about it, but I didn't actually frame it. No, and it may not happen immediately either because, let's see, it's Wednesday evening. I, if I don't do it tonight or tomorrow night, it's, it's not happening because Friday I am going to my mom's house and spending the night and she and I are going to lay flooring in her bathroom that she's redoing. She decided that she really needed a shower that she could get in and out of as she was getting older. And for some reason, the shower that my dad had picked out to go in his bathroom was like this big. My dad is taller than me. And I, I guess it was probably cheaper. <laughs> but she has just had a bigger shower installed, one that she can just walk into without like a big lift or step as because she, she's worried about that as she gets older that she might not be able to get around as well. And she wants more, she still can, to be able to do these things like this to the house and make these improvements to kind of help her out later. So she's had the shower installed and um, she told me she repainted the walls this week. She's working on that. And then she and I, if she hasn't already ripped it up, are gonna rip up the old flooring and lay down new flooring and like take the toilet up and put it back down and stuff this weekend. Cause we can do that. We'll figure it out. <laughs> the flooring that's in there now, she and I laid probably when I was in junior high or a teenager. So it's not our first rodeo, but we'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it done. I think that's it. Um, hopefully you guys didn't mind my long rambly video this time. I will do my time lapse of cross stitching update photos after this. And I will try to record another video the last half of this month, which is just going to be more death by crop stitch. So I hope you guys like it. <laughs> and I will see you guys 
Where's the stop button? See you guys next time. Bye.